Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to a course on applied transport modeling with Bizum. Today uh, it's the lecture five of this course, and uh, my name is Mohit Qureshi. Um, today we're going to talk about travel survey data. Uh, so a bit of so to start with, uh, for the for the lecture. Uh, first of all, I will give you a quick short introduction about me. Um, so I am the I am one of the PhD um, research associates uh, with Professor Constantinus Antonio at the Chair of Transportation System Engineering, and I'll be joining this course along with my colleague Guido Contelmo. You have already met him or seen him uh, in the first four lectures. Uh, yeah, we both are gonna work together to go through the course uh, for for this course with you guys. Um, yeah, so. Today we are going to talk about travel survey data. Uh, this is the basic schedule that we had for uh, the whole course and in the first four lectures given by Guido, you had two live sessions. First was on the introduction and then you had two um, network design lectures for private and public transport. And then last week we also had another hands-on practice session for uh, to so basically we asked you guys to follow a quick guide on uh, on uh, private, the private and public transport creation and also I guess some demand representation on Wisdom. Uh, I hope you guys don't have any questions on this. If you have, if you have been working on it, if you have any questions, please. Send us your emails with the queries. Uh, if I remember, so the basic idea on this, so so far there there are, there are two parts of that quick guide. One was based on private transport, and the other was on public transport. So I believe that the first hands-on practice session was for the private transport, which also included demand representation in a, in a model of Wisdom, which basically is covering how you can create zones, connectors, and an OD matrix that represents. Uh, the demand uh, with their corresponding zones. In probably next week, you will have another hands-on practice session that will be based on the second part of that good guide, which will be on public transport. And yeah, so in between, we are today we are just going to talk about travel survey data. Uh, this is basically you can say most of more or less the travel data that is used for transport modeling basically in the following up lectures we will be uh, looking in looking in into detail in, in detail into the four step modeling that is like trip the four steps of trip generation distribution mode choice and trip assignment and one of the prerequisites of 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 uh, of the trip generation is like household survey data. Then one of the prerequisites for mode choice is uh, what is the mode choice data. So how people choose different modes. So today we are going to go through different types, different ways of collecting data. What are the different types of data and how uh, how we can use them, manipulate them. Yeah. So first of all, I want to acknowledge that this uh, this most of this material has be is, is taken from the previous year. So last year we had another colleague with uh, with us, uh, Manu. Some of you might know him, uh, but he left uh, quite early. So I'm not sure if, if you guys from the first or second semester you might not don't know him. So, but he was his expertise was basically in um, travel survey designs and analysis, discrete choice modelings. So yeah, so most of the material on this travel survey is basically taken uh, from from the lecture, previous year's lecture. Uh, yeah, so going through the lecture contents, first of all, we're going to just discuss a bit about the data characteristics, the general data characteristics of a travel of travel survey data, and then like how the the the, the, the collection methods are a bit like briefly. We don't we do we will not go in detail because it's also like a complete field of travel survey design types of collection methods and also we'll just briefly have a look over an overview of different data characteristics and how and the collection methods and what are the basic ideas of, of, of creating surveys and also and then we're going to go in and see like the, what are the different types of travel, travel data now this is um, uh, this is basically okay. This can be a household data. This can be more choice data. This can be network 
observation data from loop detectors they, they, they can be different types of travel data that gives somewhat us uh, like observability how people move from where what are the mode choices and also different types of travel data next so yeah next up is uh, then uh, so we will uh, basically looking into these data we will also see like how these uh, like first of all the mainly uh, we will be working on household travel surveys so one of the major part is like okay you're always taking a sample or a survey so you cannot ask the whole population uh, for this uh, household travel uh, data so sometimes the basically idea of like a population consensus uh, is something that you get uh, household information for the whole population but uh, they are traveling uh, or mode choice data is something that is, is relatively improbable to get for the whole population so you always take a sample of your population and try to uh, basically transform this into into your your model usable data and also expand it based on the population factors uh, lastly we will also have a look into the consistency checks or problems when you are collecting data what are the different problems that are being faced basically the, the you can say like in um, uh, incomplete data sometimes there some data is wrong some 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 doesn't make sense so we have to always do some inconsistencies and and uh, data manipulations to to improve uh, our our data accuracy and also uh, if we have time so our total lecture time is one and a half hour we can rearrange this probably maybe our today's lecture is a bit less but yeah a good maybe i will also try and give you a basic introduction or a hands on introduction on r very basic how the the one or two packages you need to start with and the like we will just go through how we can read this uh, the data that we will work on later it's a household travel survey and also we'll try to perform some consistency checks maybe you can also later on spend some time and 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 may as a task to to check to perform different consistency checks and to try to uh, improve the overall accuracy of the data so yeah first of all so the basic idea to understand is what are the types of travel data so one major type of of data that we mostly require in transport modeling is to represent the demand on the network using household travel survey now this can be like a travel diary data logger so there are different types of household travel data but the basic idea is to log the travel characteristics of the population so you take a I mean it can be a fence size but you can take a sample or you can take interviews or you can take a household survey how you, you, you're taking interviews or uh, asking people to fill the forms basically to give like how they travel within a day so what are the different types of trips they do from where home to work at what time or like it can be home to shopping or whatever so the purpose of the trip the time the mode choice and uh, yeah also meanwhile because along this to to have a better understanding and and to have to improve our modeling uh, we also ask some basic demographics so we will get into this in detail and so to understand like okay what is the age what is is he is is the person job uh, doing a job is it a student is he employed and also does they do they own a car do they don't own a car so things like this the, these these somewhat are they are not transformed into uh, more detailed uh, modeling characteristics so what the first type is household travel service the second type is also mode choice service so mode choice service is basically the idea of uh, how you want to travel so household how much you travel or when you travel mode choice is how you are traveling how you are performing your activity now this is basically the idea of 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 of, uh, of people choosing the mode to travel based on a lot of things so first of all like they, it can be like okay you want like first of all let's suppose you can say that okay there can be different attributes related to this so a basic idea is like you try to create scenarios for people that okay let's suppose by car you will have this cost and this travel time because it's a peak hour maybe going by car is, is not that feasible than going by public transport like also depending on on the services that a city has for public transport sometimes it's not very feasible to use cars 
both cost and turnover the time wise but also like trying to create different scenarios for people to understand okay if you have these alternatives what will you choose so this is, is, is a type of more choice survey to understand people uh, the, the preferences of people to choose a mode for traveling now also within this we will look into stated preferences versus revealed preferences so this is also a very important aspect of this because like stated preference is very basic idea is like okay this is like what people will state that they will do versus revealed preferences is like what they will actually do sometimes you are a different state of mind uh, and you, you you give an answer to a survey but this can be biased based on your your a lot of things but revealed preference is something that you try to get what people are actually uh, actually are doing yeah and then the third also another type of this is like a network data collection like network data collection can be many things like nowadays like mainly the main source of uh, uh, traffic data was always like loop detectors counts or, or floating car data but nowadays there have been many other types of uh, uh, data exploration due to big data data analytics we are also looking into social uh, media data and stuff so basically uh, this is another category of data where you uh, this is basically observed directly from the network is in the form of counts, travel times, floating cars or whatever. Yeah? So one major thing about this is to understand what are the usage or the pur and or, or or and the purposes of these different types of data because how so, so sometimes like network uh, data collection, the data collection that is on network based, cannot directly replace the purpose of a household travel survey and similarly sometimes like household travel survey uh, will not cannot fulfill all the all the requirements that can be maybe filled with travel data survey. so we look uh, network data uh, data so we will look into this as well so to understand the idea of like these different types of data what are their purposes and usages so first of all you remember this from uh, maybe one of the previous lectures that these are the this is the basic Four step model. Uh, a basic four step model is uh, you have a zonal data, so you divide uh, the network into 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 some zones in the spatially, and then basically once you have the zonal data, which is that okay, what is the population of this data of 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 each zones? Okay, uh, well, how many jobs? How many workers there are? The uh, workplaces there are? How many schools are there? So basically, the, the different factors for production and attraction. Of, of of all the zones is, is inputted in trip generation and like now trip generation is basically we we'll let we will have very detailed looks in each of the steps but trip generation basically is to create like the idea of uh, production and directions i understand probably most of you will know what is a four step model because you have been taking this uh, like probably once or twice maybe once i guess in in from the chair of wolf host uh, um, uh, Professor Wolfhorst in it, I think it would be TPMO the course and then you, you, you I think you, you, you would have some understanding but the basic idea that I want to convey is like okay different types of data is used like trip generation uses zonal data to create production and attraction so it doesn't need detailed household data or detailed trip data or when people are moving at what time and also if what it needs only is the zonal demographics, zonal data, corporations, uh, schools and, and different other attributes. So second when you go in you will see like okay trip distribution it also has its own uh, on the modeling technique how you create from production attraction the whole OD matrix in, in trip uh, 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 and now this this might need some other types of data so uh, it's, it, this is basically always using a gravity model that is based on what is the impedance between traveling between zones and also like what is the production and attractions like city center will always be attract have will have a lot of attraction for for jobs for for shopping and uh, so it will have a lot of attraction um, uh, and and also the size of the zone is is also a plus in, in a gravity model similarly so this is this is the type of modeling technique for for trip generation next is model split now model split basically by the name is more choice and this requires the mode choice survey or mode choice data that defines how people so you already have an OD matrix that knows that 
from the from the output of trip distribution step you get an OD matrix that tells you okay how many people from move from one zone to the other zone so you have 10 zones you will have a matrix of 10 by 10 that says that each for from for each OD pair of each, for each zone pair you will have these number of people moving now model split is like okay now people are moving but these are persons how they will move you need you can have cars, public transports, or other mobility, shared mobility services, different type of services that that can be used to to run this. So this thing is something that okay that will use the mode choice. How people have the preferences uh, to travel. Thus, traffic assignment, traffic assignment is also another type of choice that is route choice. Now, route choice is very different in the sense that okay, after perceiving the mode, let's suppose you want to travel by a car. You have many routes to choose now which route you will do so transport modeling is all about choices of course that we can understand right so it's all about choices first you choose you want to travel okay where you want to travel what activity you want to do so destination choice and then you will do okay which mode you want to choose that is mode split and mode choice and then lastly how you want to go from one place to the other which route that is a, a, a traffic assignment so even in public transport you also have a traffic assignment okay which lane you want to which which uh, metro line you want to do or even you, you need one transfer you can do two transfers so this is also a type of assignment how uh, with, uh, with with which different types of lanes uh, lines public transport lines you want to go from your region to destination so in route choice let's suppose the type of data you need would be very different like you you you, you choose a mode already now within the mode let's suppose you have a car you have three routes how do you perceive the cost versus travel time let's suppose you are a relatively richer person of a very uh, of a very nice uh, you're working in a very nice company and your time is relatively more important than your cost so you will might be able to pay high tolls and go towards either the tunnels or motorways to get faster or travel faster from your region to destination versus a low a normal income person that can spend more time on the on the road on congestions but he wants to pay less so the, the preference between uh, of, of you for travel or which route you want to travel is also a different type of data. So one, um, it, it can be normally we also uh, sim, uh, model the route choice with uh, logic models. Uh, but yeah, network data like, like counts, uh, travel times, they, they are also used a lot. Uh, for calibration of uh, of of uh, these all these parameters in uh, on a network scale on a bigger network scale when you do traffic assignment you try to tweak the, the these logic models so that you are able to to replicate what you have in in in, in your simulated model versus the out, outside world like how trying to uh, trying to basically calibrate the people's choice to choose different routes based on their preferences or for cost or travel time so you're trying to tweak the cost and travel times what they perceive how they perceive them and then try to uh, map or, or assign all the traffic on the network and see like if you're able to match the counts outside so now here like you can have different types of travel or uh, uh, network data collections uh, that you can use in in, in in calibrating or modeling route choice yeah so yeah this already i discussed so uh, transport is all about choices uh, as, I, as i told you like okay you want to travel so if you are if you are if you are if mostly like where you want to travel is production and direction productions is like based on a population uh, how many people want to travel so a choice to travel then okay attractions are if you have enough attractions in a zone if it's a city center more of the people will choose to go there then tip distribution okay from where to where you want to travel more choice with which mode you want to travel and then lastly also like uh, route, route choices okay how you want to travel which route you want to take based on your cost travel times and everything so here like it also gives you a basic understanding of three different types of system one is supply so how the supply is supply is basically you can say the network either private or public transport how much how much time you will take like okay if it's a congested network you have a reduced supply and larger demand okay this this plays a factor in in, in how people travel also like then one one basic uh, uh, attribute like or part of of traffic transport model is supply the second part is demand so if your supply like demand is like how many people want to travel at that time at what time and then the third type is also like the activity system which is basically uh talking about from where to where you want to travel 
how many people are living in one zone that will travel like the productions and the attractions is like economic activities that is happening in the so based on the economic activities you will have more attractions based on the living population you will have more production and and things like this so this is this is basically and also the accessibility so maybe you don't you, within a zone how what what is the accessibility for schools for shopping and also maybe people with local better local accessibility will travel less to 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 farther distances and they because they have more accessibility or and also like it, it plays a great part in mode choice that okay how people travel like with bike and all with mode choice so yeah this is, i'm getting into too much details but yeah i just wanted to give you a brief understanding of of, of different types of of data uh, that uh, that can be that, that are there in travel based on a travel, uh, transport modeling <clears throat> so next up we're going to talk about data characteristics and collection uh, so what are the general characteristics of a travel demand data? So this is basically what we are, we are looking into is, 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 is not like more simply more choice network but the overall characteristics of a generic uh, travel, travel demand data that can be there. So um, a basic idea what you would, should have like what, what it should or it could have is uh, what are the trip variables? So trip variables, time when you want to move from zone to zone okay what is the uh, and also like okay um mode 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 choice would be like also part of it like more choice variable like which mode you want to take and uh, uh, trip variables are like from time from which time to which time and at what time in the day you want to move and also from where to where and then social economic variables are also important that is basically what is the age what is the income because these are as i told you like your mode choice or your route choice or your, your your traveling pattern how much you want to move is really based on how uh, on your demo on a person's demographics that okay if he uh, what, what is his age what is his household size does he own a car doesn't he own, he doesn't own a car and what is uh, what are the income levels so this is basically the socioeconomic variables associated uh, for each person so these three are the major types of different groups that are part in a travel uh, in a travel survey data uh, next, then uh, we also think of uh, the different levels of, uh, of of data analysis. Yeah, so um, one. So let's go to the the least one is like the individual level. So okay, what is the like? You can see that uh, top right table that is about okay gender, age, occupation, all of this. So so the different level of like this can be level of and so they, you can have a level of analysis. Let's suppose you have a question that okay how many people in munich will take public transport during peak hours so if you want to understand so what you can do is like you're gonna have a travel survey on first you can have a travel survey on a generic household based uh, population you take a random a random uh, sample of surveys by questionnaires or, or or interviews what you try to do understand is like okay you give them scenario okay in peak hour uh, you have to go from your home to city center what will you choose you have this uh, this uh, service for public transport this service if you use your own car and the third one may be a shared mobility service or whatever so uh, then based on different uh, uh, characteristics of 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 each uh, person like his gender his age his his uh, his uh, activity purpose his income levels everything so you can have different um attributes the, the, this is what what we see in this table as well like okay what, like male maybe if you're a male you're more likely to use a public transport than a few if you're a female maybe similarly if you have a higher income you're less likely to take public transport than a lower income so this is the idea of having individual level uh, analysis okay different attributes that are individual based attributes to understand what they they uh their priorities their preferences are next is household level which is like okay though there are a few types here like lifestyle education so lifestyle okay having kids uh, is a couple or is, is is a bachelor so how many has kids doesn't have kids uh also like okay um education what is the level of education for a person like also does he want a driver license because like if you see the parameter values and also these have different influence on a given choice for that person okay driving license can be very important like if you have a driving if you don't have a driving license it's obviously very less likely 
or maybe you can do carpooling and all but relatively it's very less likely that you're gonna use a car as the mode of transport you're gonna do public transport or, or other uh, mobility services but yeah so these these this, this, the household level um, analysis is based on on, on on overall household the lifestyle of household the education and stuff so yeah the third one is, is zonal level so this is something that is more we are work we will work on is like the four step modeling based on zones Okay, zones is okay uh, for a given zone. Uh, what is the production attraction like home based work trips like between two zones? What are uh, the attraction of of of, of like home based other zones, home based uh, home based other trips? So zonal level is something like between zones. What is the travel patterns? Home based works, home based other all the different activities that can happen between zones. So zone size will also have a has uh, has, a, has a big a big attribute let's say like the productions will be larger if it's a city center or if it's a, it's let's suppose it's like a football stadium we have Ariane's arena so the zone will have very specific attraction on very specific days so different uh, attributes for a zone uh, will have different types of um, impact so basically this this level of, of analysis will be more of a zone analysis so yeah, then uh, okay. So th this is the, the 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 understanding of okay, like this uh, as a, like uh, survey planning is basically as I told you, like it's also like a separate field. And the the idea here is that trying to create smart surveys so that you can get most statistically significant um, attributes or answers from uh, or outputs from your from your survey. So. Uh, you try to design your survey based on, on so let's suppose if you have like lesser resources you, know, you cannot do a lot of surveys what you try to do is like you'll try to go to better quality trying to have have like there are two if you can see like the trade-offs is between like either you can have very good quality or you can have very good quantity let's suppose quality in the sense you can have very detailed survey but then when you will push out the survey very less people will likely to try to finish up the survey so the quality would be good but in then like you will you might have lesser quantity of service versus like you can have a lot of quantity of service you can ask just one, one or two very basic questions okay what is your mode of travel where you want to travel from and to what and what is your mode of travel almost a lot of people will, will answer you but you have very less uh, understanding of 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 the other different attributes of uh, uh, of this travel uh, survey because like you, you you might have more number of respondents you can, you can have larger sizes so whatever you can extract from this data will be very statistically significant uh, but you will not have a lot of things versus if you have a quality of data you might want to create very nice different scenarios of more choice that okay let's suppose you have peak hour let's suppose you have off peak hour let's suppose if you have subsidies in public transport let's suppose if you have uh, i don't know um, uh, car ownership versus no car ownership so things like this uh, you can have you can have create you can create different scenarios and then from these scenarios like you less we people less people are will be willing to answer you a lot of scenarios but if the people that will answer you will get very good quality of, of, of the survey that you can extract a lot of results or a lot of outputs from this survey data. Yeah, so this is also like a flow chart on the right side that says, okay, the, what is the way, how, you, how do you do this? So, preliminary planning, selection of the survey method you want to do. Uh, then, okay, so, so this this loop that you see is like, is, is a very crucial loop that, okay, you have a survey method, then you have, do a sample design. Uh, you create a sample and do you do a pilot survey, a, a test survey, and see how uh, how yeah, the 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 outputs uh, how how are the outputs been uh, been been given? Like, uh, is your survey sample design or your survey design is good enough or not? So you try to play in a loop, trying to improve your survey from your pilot from your survey design from your pilot survey, trying to improve your questionnaire, and then once you are you are you are finished designing your survey this is basically you do a survey data survey administration and everything you do data analysis data editing and all and then basically in the end you are trying to extract the results or the outputs for the purpose of the survey so yeah so first up uh, so data collection processes so this i already covered mostly is like okay what are the different types of data individual mode choice population so there are other also like 
Now, now, if you see this thing, this this is also like the the the, the colors, the two colors uh, define the two different types of data. So one is a survey data that is like you cannot get it without service. Like this is a type of process. Like what is the different data, data collection process? You can get the population data or establishment data directly from other data sources from government and everything. But what is the how people choose modes or how people travel, the household travel survey, the most travel, you have to do it by service. So and that later on, let's suppose what is the total drift data? Total drift data can be both population and survey because as I said, when you do surveys, you have to take a sample of your population. You cannot you don't have always enough resources to ask like more about like you can ask uh, you can have the consensus you can have the population but you cannot have like how people all the people in, in munich choose more choice because that's too expensive and too 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 i don't know too, too much uh, effort to just understand so what you do is like you try to take a sample of more choice and then once you have the sample of more choice you try to expand this more choice sample based on the associated demographics that I told you, based on popular income, age, and everything of of of, of the of the uh, respondents, to try to scale up using the population data and this more choice survey, try to scale up to understand what is the total trips data. So if you have a more choice survey and you have different user groups that you took the survey from, like you, people having different incomes, different age, and all uh, that are very very crucial to 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 for the more choice. Um, uh, preferences uh, so you you take different user groups you have different user groups you have different choices taken by different uh, demographic uh, uh, groups uh, groups of different demographics and then you have a population data that already tells you like okay okay overall in, in Munich you have this much percentage of a people with this age this much percentage of people with this income so what you do is like you basically try to expand your uh, your survey data with the in combination with the population data to get the total trip data obviously always a bit biased you cannot get the exact but basically having enough significant statistically significant survey outputs to basically use it and uh, with the population data and expand it to the to the overall population and total trips data so this is basically the the the, 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 the you can say the processes of of, uh, of the data, data collection techniques. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about already have talked a lot about the different types of data, but like let's get into the detail a bit about the, the like what are the different questions, how uh, different questionnaires are for for uh, different types of, of travel data. So, first up, as I told, is uh, the household trip data. So, if you see a few questions here, like what is the so you understand, like. Do you generally have access to vehicles of so vehicle ownership or vehicle accessibility? Now, this is one thing that is like uh, maybe an important idea for household trip uh, as well. And then, okay, what is your work location, school location? So, this is basically these locations are okay, your zones. Uh, so, you live in one zone. So, you already like when you're doing the survey, you already know like this is the zone of, 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 of the home. And then, what is the work zone? What is the shopping zone? Where is the school zone? Where, so, other, other basic other locations. Uh, for for to understand like how how people will this people from this zone will, is moving from this zone to, for work to the other zones like for work and other activities and yeah then also so um, gender so demographics as I told you are very important so gender male female birth year that gives you the age and next up is also like normal not normal is like okay I this is something that I told you like what state is stated preference or state revealed preference is that he's stating something but okay is it a normal day for you is it not normal this the, the response is always biased uh, people like this there have been a lot of researches on, uh, on this thing that okay people to do the preference the, the, the choices on the given time based on a lot of other attributes a lot of other other state of mind you can like they're also like very uh, like interesting research is that if you give a lot of numbers to 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 like if you show people a lot of numbers continuously, they will intend to choose more of those numbers than the others and stuff. So things like things like this can add a lot of biasness as well. But like here, it's a very simple question: Is it a normal day for you? Is it not normal? Do you have any sickness? Do you have location? Now, 
this is not completely that biased as what I'm talking about. This is more like, okay, uh, the trips that you're telling us, is it a weekday? Is it a normal day for you? Is it not normal? Like if you are, if it's a normal day, this, this can be corresponding to your weekdays, but it can, you will have a different pattern in the weekends that can be, can be vacations. It can be, it can be your, your visiting your, 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 your doing some other activities. Also vehicle in repair is something rather influential that okay you have a vehicle you have a car you normally you commute using the car but maybe your car is broken and whatever so your 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 the the, the 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 trips that you're reporting is not actually the trips that you will do but you are you're doing them because your car is not available you're using public transport only. so this is this is also like one of the questions uh useful then okay I do leave the house. I don't leave the house. Yeah, these are these are relatively uh, easier to understand questions. So basically, you're trying to extract different attributes of of each person's travel over the day, and yeah, then okay, trip information. So before we were thinking, okay, uh, for your for your correspondent, for your respondent, uh, what 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 is the what is the um, the overall state so the day he's, he has like the age demographics and all and then also when you're asking him or like you're doing trips in the day what are the trip attributes so this is more for each trip different attributes so like okay starting point of the trip home home to work home to school the time of the trip purpose or activity transportation more choice this is basically the more choice that people so this within this household trip that individual trip data you also have the trip data plus the more choice data okay people move from this zone to this zone so if you have 100 people you did 100 people and but 50 people go to work and out of those 50 10 go here 10 go here 10 go here this is trip data and then more choice is like within one zone to the other how much people use a car how much people use a public transport how much people, so people that get into the city center from outskirts like from from like um, uh, different places on Munich might be more intended to use public transport due to parking issues due to congestion in the city center so uh, it, it's really subjective to 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 basically understand like from zone to zone the more choice will be different based on the accessibility towards car network states in between the like the, the travel time between the zones also um, the, the the public transport accessibility if they 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 direct lines you need to transfer so things like this this is the different mode choice between different zones yeah so this is basically the question for trip information then also continuing okay the, so first of all the, this one was for for the origin the next one is for the destination uh, so what time you arrive at the destination or the distance okay where are you going so the zone or here you're writing the address okay and then also questions like okay are you accompanied by a child or not so things like this uh, is okay like different other different attributes about the trip so yeah this is basically the the, the somewhat a typical household travel uh, trip so we have already so we will work on a given household trip uh, data that we have uh, so I'll give you in the later later part of this lecture I'll, I'll show you the data in the form Excel sheet that is basically the household as you have zone we have zone attributes then we have household attributes like each household has its ID and people uh, that are that are in uh, in a household and do they own a car or not own a car then you have person information for so each person what is the age is he male female maybe the income levels and then lastly we will have trip uh, excel file that the, or excel sheet that will have for each person how many trips he do within a day so like this is a complete household uh, like uh, trip data that we will have and then like the trip uh, sheet is the household individual trip data and then the person sheet is household per individual person data person attributes then the household attributes and then lastly the zone attributes zone attributes are not something that is, is household data but this is basically the population data or the consensus data that you get from the government or the sources um, next up would be mode choice data so what is a mode choice data I, I'm already talking a lot in between about this type of data so the mode choice data is like 
what people will choose when they want to travel from one place to the other like they already understood they want to travel now they need to choose a mode if they own a car they might go by car or might, might go by public transport so there are two types of this data first up is a revealed preference data so given we the the, the, uh, the data what we need to understand like what we need first of all to get the characteristics of the alternative so if you want to use by car the cost of the car travel times okay other other different uh, attributes public transport similarly from zone to zone what is the travel time okay maybe there are transfers a transfer has a lot of impacts one transfer more than one transfer people don't like to choose so different characteristics of all the alternatives maybe mobility as a service apps uh, is easier like people like to walk people like to bike there are new e-scooters e e uh, services also available bike sharing services car sharing services are available things like this so basically first of all when you want to do the the the, the, the one basic part of your mode choice data is the characteristics of all the alternatives then like if you are not if it's probable that you will not have all the so all the available the or characteristics so you try to extra collect these or approximate or uh, the, 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 the 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 these these characteristics from different resources um next okay real preference is if we say like okay if, if these are if these are stated by the individuals as i told they, they bikes might be present it's, it's very probable that the the the, the perception is not the what he's, he's responding is not that entirely what is actually happening and so there's always a biasness in the stated preferences so perception that's what we say like real preferences versus stated is like perception versus reality and okay different factors that we don't consider into account so another thing that okay revealed preference data will be different for stated preference due to first perception versus reality then a lot of factors that we will not be able to take into account because we cannot like get all the relationships different different you know, different uh, there will be a lot of different other uh, attributes that influence the choices that we will not be able to take into account this is one thing very important yeah so revealed preference data always gives you what is the reality and the reason that it's different from stated preference can be a lot of different things yeah so a stated preference data what is a stated preference it, it's basically the controlled environment data so you do a travel survey you have okay let's suppose like if you see this is uh, the, the figure it's, it's it's an example of of a scenario that i was talking about before like okay you have a car sharing you have public transport you have autonomous car sharing you have shared autonomous vehicle you have a bike you have a private car and these are the trip attributes that you will have so one basic is travel cost bike is gonna cost you zero but it's gonna take 30 minutes to for you and obviously some physical effort you like it you don't like it depends on your preference then private car is just four euros and it gives you 15 minutes uh, by travel in vehicle travel time and also it gives you the privacy to 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 travel by yourself public transport takes the privacy out of, uh, from you but it's relatively cheaper is three euros maybe two euros but this is a given scenario for you to move from one place to another people basically will try to perceive in a, this is a controlled environment experiment that okay i want to travel these are the different preferences what will i choose i'll choose a private car probably or maybe a public transport yeah so there's a controlled environment survey and we are always evaluating only a few variables we cannot evaluate everything like here we are mostly mostly we always uh, evaluate car cost travel time privacy can be another thing and also the comfortness of of using a public transport versus using a car sharing or a, or a ride sharing thing so so a few only a few variables are always evaluated when um, in as i said in the revealed preference data you get what is actually happening there can be a lot of different attributes in your in general person's life that can uh, influence for his choice to choose to use a different mode yeah so yeah that's what, he, what we say like what stated might not actually really happen so this is something that so this is the idea of overall mode choice data then a uh, next up okay population establishment data this is um, rather relatively simpler to understand basically is like 
we we do a questionnaire we do a questionnaire for for trip information we do a questionnaire for more choice but we cannot ask everyone so what we do like we try to take five percent samples or like try to basically get enough sample that our overall um results are relatively statistically significant you have learned a lot about uh, this about this in in, uh, in uh, applied uh, statistics course but i'm not going to go into details for that but basically try to get enough samples so that your overall overall data that overall results are statistically significant and then next up what you need is like what is the overall population attribute so in your survey you did 100 uh, questionnaires and out of 100 30 were student and 60 were employed and then only five or ten people were uh, were retired people uh, yeah or or or, or uh, elder people and now uh, when you do the when you get the population data it's rather obvious that the, the attributes that the demographic attributes for the overall population will not be the same the percentages will not be the same so there will be like 15 percent students or 60 percent employees and then maybe 20 percent early people so basically you need different you will have different expansion uh, 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 expansion factors as well right so uh, basically the idea is for these types of data is to 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 start from your survey data and then try to expand your questionnaire to all the actual population yeah to 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 um, approximate your whole population attributes yeah? so below we also like as i told you like for each zone what are the zonal characteristics so this is an example of of zonal characteristics that is uh more of uh like population plus um, demographic city demographics uh, data that okay moisture fry had zone around with so the so zenling uh, area gawking or, or or gross harden so these are different zones what is the population for all of these zones then of oh, passing is another town freezing so things like the, these are different small suburban areas around munich each of them will have a different population workplaces available recreational centers shopping area so these are different uh, basic attributes for each different type of zone different zones, uh, for each different area of the city yeah this is the basic idea of 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 of, of uh, zonal data yeah so and then like and the other type also is like consensus data that you can get from six uh, like offices then and uh, it can have more detailed information like a population that uh, might not give you a lot of things like give you okay the percentage of different age groups income levels and things but a consensus data can be more detailed about each individual like or, or each household information like you can get information by consensus that okay how many households have car ownership how many households are um, are above this income level and there's more about like, a lot of things about individual and household maybe also you can get um, different consensus information i don't know like um, yeah so car ownership is one thing that is rather very observed or direct and impacted on, on, on our modeling but yeah, so other data as well. So this uh, this is also used a lot, like consensus data. So now next up, so we understand the overall idea of um, of different types of data, uh, their collections, their uses. So do, do you understand what are the different, uh, the, what is the household data, what is the more choice data, and other population data, and also and how we use them in transport modeling. Now I'm gonna get in a bit and, and see that okay, how we we use these data is directly in transform modeling how we transform them and how we expand them that like the from from the we said that the data collection process as like survey and population but how you do the how you connect them how you expand them how you expand the travel data on the whole population yeah so first up to understand the basic idea is what the what is a trip so a trip so we get into the understanding of 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 uh, trip data is like what is a trip is basically uh from one origin to one destination for a given activity yeah so you want to go from home to work you can take a car one trip by car then you can take a bus you go by foot to the bus and then you from the bus station go to work this is one trip with three different modes two different modes walking and bus combined mode you get one trip from home to work yeah then another type 
is okay let's see uh, an activity chain you can say so you start your day going from home to university now this is one trip that you can do either by car or maybe by bus and then from university instead of going directly home you go to shopping now this trip this is an activity chain so you do first activity from home to work and the next activity is like from work to shopping third is like from shopping you go back home so this in total is not one trip but three different trips now each trip has its own origin and destination has its own departure and arrival time has its own activity so based on the activity you will might you might have different motors like for example from uh, home to shopping you will not like to go by public transport because you have a lot of things that you need to bring back home so might you will prefer you might prefer always or mostly more choice like we with car so this is something that okay a given different activity can influence like or the the purpose of trip can directly influence the the other attributes of 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 your travel yeah and also the times let's suppose that like home to work is always mostly uh in the morning home to university is also you can say maybe a bit late but always in the morning and and they are very specific like you you have in general you have within the day two peak hours morning and evening and these peak hours are mostly the major part of of this because are are travel from home to work and work from home work to home and also like somewhat like in the morning the morning peak is always larger than the evening peak and the reason also is like home with a lot of students from home uh, to university right so that is they are also moving between 7 to 10 am along with home to work trips but in the evening many students might come early my students come late and also for the work people many might come like that the the the, the 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 distribution of of return travel to home can be much dissipated than in the morning so this is like okay this is the basic um, distribution of travel in like these uh, distribution of of people's travel within a day with like you see two different congestions in morning and evening is given is is due to the different activities and the choice of people to do that activity especially no one would like to go shopping in 7 am in the morning or 8 am in the morning especially with public transport like it's very congested and generally people they will not like to travel in the morning in so congested like ubans where they like all the people are standing and because they can easily go after one or two hours with with a lot less congestion in ubans and also on 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 uh, on, on the road network so yeah the type of activity you want to do is really influencing the other trip attributes your travel and everything yeah so then uh, also well, let's see to the definition of a trip so a basic trip is trip production and attraction are defined based on the trip ends the trip from is a production and trip to is attraction and uh, except the trip ends that are originated at home so this is something that is uh, like a bit tricky to understand is that okay your trip originates and ends always at home right but all the trips that either originate or end at home we consider home as the production and the other as the attraction always so those all are all considered as trip productions of the home location based on the idea that it is the household and it's the activity that give rise to or in their words produce the trip so the idea is that okay if you have um, two different types of uh, trips if you have two different types of uh, uh trip activities as we see in this trip chain like you have home to uh, home to school and then shopping to home now these two are home based trips because the production in general was from home and has to re- get back to home so as it says like all the all the considered uh, all those all that have either origin or end at home those all trips are, con- are considered produced in the home location based on the idea that the household and activities are the main reason that give uh, rise to the production of that trip so it's it's it's, it's basically the home location that gives rise like we have to do this trip there so the sh- the, the shopping location can be anywhere else there in different other, other zones but home is always uh, yeah, the same uh special location as well so we consider always the the production as the home um 
uh, home locations are always the production layer. So we'll get into this in detail as well. Like yeah, this, for example, this is a given example that uh, you can see. Just a moment. So basically, this diagram gives a good representation of uh, the previous definition that we just saw. Basically, we have four different zones, home, work, store, and bank, and we have a number of different trips. And if you see below the list, um, you will see the total number of productions and attractions for each zone. So for example, zone one, home, it will never have any attraction. So home-based work trips work is always the attraction and home is always the production either it's home to work or work to home so that's why if you see if you count uh, for zone one that is home the number of production trips so basically all the trips that go or come from home is production so the total number are four next so there are two work one business and one shop yeah and zero attraction next is a zone two that is a bank so there is one trip that is coming from home so that is an attraction trip for the bank and uh, then there is a trip that is trip four from bank to store so this is a production trip for the bank that is like from known home based to a known home based zone so it's uh, produced from bank and attracted to store so basically zone 2 has one production one attraction trip and then zone 3 is back to home zone 4 also has from from one to home so they don't have any production but to each attraction trips yeah so the total so you i think this gives you a very good understanding the basic idea is that all the trips from or to home are um, home based trips and their total number is production in home and attraction on other on the on the other side versus like all known home based trips that don't have either a home production and home 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 origin and home, home destination they would have both production and attraction which are known home based so yeah next is uh, <clears throat> so now so you understand the basic idea of uh, of what is a trip now what we do is like we'll think like the basic we'll now we we'll define uh, the understanding of how the data are, uh, are expanded from uh, the survey of the household trip data or mode choice data true uh, to uh, using some population or other uh, data to the overall total trips of the network so as i said travel survey is not usually collecting uh, data from each household but a few Households that can be a few hundred households or it depends on the sample size uh, The surveys need to be extend, okay, expanded and this is done uh, by two methods basically so one is uh, So basically compare what is the actual number of households in a zone Versus the number of households that are surveyed in that zone So we basically get an ex simple expansion factor for this thing so it's like this so basically you have a population say so we can have different types of segments so here the population segment that has low income with the car and we have a household survey in that city like 5764 are uh, households that have low income with car and out of that we have surveyed 35 so now the expansion factor we can simply divide and get a 164.7 expansion rate so this is basically what we will do is like we will basically multiply all the attributes of that survey with 164.7 to cover all the households with this specific type of group similarly all the rest of them so this is one type of uh, of expansion the other type of expansion is uh, using a proper units of uh, like analysis based uh, for example uh, that is like more discrete in the sense that simple is like trips per person so this is uh, uh, basically also called as cross classification we will use this technique in trip generation expansion so what basically what the idea is that you have um, a factor of population so a factor uh, so you get a factor from from the survey let's suppose you have uh, I mean, you can you can have different user groups of course so one thing is like home to work 
let's suppose so uh, or not let don't say whatever let's say male or female right so male per person trips are five each day and you have male population as i don't know 0.1 million so you get total trips 0 0.5 well, 5 into 0 0.1 that is 0 0.5 uh, million trips so the 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 factor is based on what population that you're taking you can take simple per person trips that is like maybe 1.7 1.2 whatever or 1. Point, or, or 2.5 i don't know so that would be a factor the factor is based on what population that you're taking is it a different group or is it like the, the attributes of the of, of the population so similar to these 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 groups so we have like low income with car similarly here we can have trips for um, car owner versus no car owner so a population the population with car ownership with and the factor in the survey how many what is the number of trips for all the persons with car owners so you take multiply simply that and you get total trips for the car owners in this uh, or in this in your in your, in your study here in the book so that is the basic idea of cross classification and simple expansion of uh, of 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 your uh, your specific uh, type of group or trips to uh, from from the surveyed trips to the whole population trips this we'll also use in in in, in trip generation production so probably in the next lecture so you will you will see more details for this uh, next uh, up, so basically we we have finished the idea of uh, of uh, like the trip data. So we understand the different types of trips. Then we also understand what is uh, uh, so how we we use different types of trip information. So household, so different zonal. Uh, there, there's some zonal data that we get from consensus population whatever. Then there's like household trip survey data that we get, and then there's also the mode choice data. So how we use different types of data and like for example here we give you an example that okay how you expand the trip or household and trip information data to the whole population next we are also going to talk about different um, errors biases and problems that we can occur we, uh, we can we can face in in this type of data uh, so yeah first up so basically individual household trip data we always choose or should choose a randomly selected sample of population and uh, these these so the idea like there can be many human based error because these data are being performed by either by interviews tel telephones apps or by uh, forms google docs and stuff like that you know so there can be a lot of human error in in reporting the information and also the, the, these are like human and also the biases so stated preferences yes and all the biases are also like they are, they, they, these are few issues that can happen in, in a survey right so yeah this is for example uh, is an example of a trip data uh, so information so if you say each if you see each row it shows you like a activity chain so uh, for example as if you see the second line you have at 10 a.m you the, the person takes a bus arrives at 10 40 what is the activity it's shopping and then you this is one trip and then the next trip is he leaves uh, from there at one takes the bus and go home now these are basically two home based trips and the next one i mean uh, I'm, I'm assuming that this is i am not sure but this side will be also like let's let's see a larger one let's see this line which is like it starts at 11 a.m and it walks till 11, 10 minutes and gets to shopping and then at 12 30 he walks and go back home and then he takes a car at nine so this is basically a trip information for the whole day of the person right so this is something that the data would look like and you will see a few errors here for example here there's a lot of like uh, other uh, errors and it's greek probably so it's from manus i am not sure but yeah i think these are some reporting errors i would say that the, he's trying to show and then yeah so similarly also here this is the second one so these are this is, okay trip ids from which questionnaire so far like now this is the raw data this is how raw information would be different trip chains for each person for the whole day and this later on is like transformed into different trip ids so trip id one two is from the questionnaire two and uh, it has origin and destination so the first trip id is like from one to two so maybe one is home and the two is like maybe shopping and then 
two to three, three might be going leisure or work or whatever, right? So, um, so basically the idea is like each, here, this is a trip table. That This can be called a trip table, you can call it simply, right? This is a raw data about activity chains for all individual persons and this is transformed into trip tables that each trip is one row which has okay from questionnaire from questionnaire you can say that okay you can have a person id we will see it later in another like organized form of, of of travel data but yeah each questionnaire of course is for one person so these are two trips from a single person from different origin destinations which have the id so we have zones of each origin destination and then we also have like coordinate information and yeah you see so this is like home to shopping and then shopping to go back home now, now this is destination location three which i'm not sure why is it but i think it should be one this is uh, i'm not sure this might be wrong so there are some inconsistencies that you need to check into it yeah so but this is the idea of how we transform all of the data into trip information the point is like what we need is more uh the direct trips that are being performed that we try to replicate into our modeling in our in our visual modeling right so we basically try to transform those activity chains into individual trips with origin and destination and also basically the important information will be the mode which mode it is choosing activities are also important when we're trying to group them and try to have different expansion factors and other other things so you will see in the four step modeling but the basic these are the basic basic uh, basic uh, um, processed data that we will directly use in the four step model then uh, next is uh, some more examples so how we are organizing these things so you see that the typical so now i'm going to show you a typical household travel data so you understand like this is this is basically trip information simple trip information that you get from a household survey now this doesn't include the household at attributes or household demographics right it's just like the trip information each each person trip information and this is transformed into trip table now i'm going to show you the systematic like three divisions of of of, of the household survey data so first is a household household has its household id where what is the zone year move in move out okay this might be used but this is not for 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 grant like modeling this will like for forecasting and stuff but okay zone the uh, household id how many persons are there so there are five persons and then how many children are there so two children so and secondly we car ownership how many cars are there so they, they have two cars right so next so this is a typical household data next is a person data so out of these uh, five persons, two are children and three are adults. So we will have three person IDs. So now we have three person IDs like and each person ID has its further information like person gender, male, female and then okay what is the age of the person, nationality, maybe income. So it can be household income, it can be person income but basically we divide person has individual person attributes, household has household attributes and then from the reference of household you get three persons and from the, per the reference of person ids you will have trip tables which i'm i think i don't have i missed it but we will have trip tables where you have like person id 300 and th like 30,011 will have three trips so 30,011 and then another one two three that has like three trips that he performed that day and from two so the same so the thing that is here and this will also have not just the trip id in the start but also the person id from which person so instead of a questionnaire you might have a person id that will create the exact trip report so we will see the example in the excel sheets as well so yeah this is the basic idea and then now uh, as i was uh, talking about this that okay th there can be a lot of problems uh, in in in, in uh, trying to collect the data in 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 um, it can be human error it can be biasness i mean it's very hard to to remove biasness directly but simple errors that are human errors or incomplete information can be uh, can be can be tried to address so to do this for example like we are, there are a number of different consistency checks that we can perform so all of these are different types of, of attributes so for example start and end location of the trips are so just as I, I saw in the previous one that okay if, if a trip is like from home to shopping and shopping to home like home is always for that person is the same id right so the location start and end 
location trips have to be consistent. The zones of for, for home for a household has to be the same. Shopping, work, or anything else can be different, but home is the same, right? So it, it should be consistent. Similarly, okay, geotag checks, sequence of trips. Sequence of trips is something that can be inconsistent or check or can be checked for consistency. That okay, a person moves from the morning till till okay like in the afternoon he's shopping and then like after one or two he's, 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 he has leisure so there's no there shouldn't be any overlap between the trip uh, information so things like this are important also like for example the travel times so from zone to zone when he's moving what is the travel from a departure travel and this has to be consistent there shouldn't be like a human error that okay from nine till 30 or 1 a.m. he was like from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. he was just traveling for like which can be traveled in half an hour things like this so these are some basic consistency checks that we that can be performed uh, on, on your data and that should be performed to try to remove all the different kind of inconsistencies or incomplete informations as well right so yeah so that's like there are a number of inconsistencies and now to fix these I mean the, the basic idea would be like either if you're not able to understand the the the, the incomplete, incomplete or wrong information if it's more than uh, enough that you cannot manipulate like cannot uh, uh, impute it or or manually fix or add you will basically simply try and delete these questionnaires right because you don't want to add more inconsistency or noise so one idea is like just simply delete the questionnaire if if it, if it is incomplete information is very wrong like if travel time i'm not sure about travel time but yeah maybe travel times maybe the trip information is a lot overlapping and uh, things like this or or uh, mode is missing so a mode missing it might be also a crucial uh, for for mode choice data when you're using the data for mode choice if the mode itself is missing even if you have the trip information you will might like to just simply remove the questionnaire right so uh, yeah the, that's the answer. third one imputation is like okay if you if you have um, the trip information and might be that okay zone is missing that okay or, or zone number or id is wrong and he's telling you it's home you can probably based on other information you can uh, basically try and replace or remove the error incomplete you can complete the incomplete information so these three types of fixes that can be found the data and we will have a lot of errors or some errors in our data which i would like you to perform some checks and try to remove these kind of inconsistencies yeah so yeah, I think uh, yeah. So uh, my slides almost are finished now. So as I uh, talk in the start, so uh, we can also try and go and see what is the. Um, so as per our uh, lecture content, so uh, we have covered almost most of the things. I hope uh, you don't have a lot of questions, but of course you can ask all the questions by email, or we can have you can also write in the news or discussion section. So maybe we can create just send us an email and. And also write maybe you can write uh, in comments below this video as well that okay what are the what, what what things you don't understand but I would also that you will have more and more information in the coming lectures for all of these different types for, for more choice for household survey you will get more information as we go further in the detail of four step modeling uh, yeah so uh, we got a basic introduction of uh, what are the different uh, travel data uh, next. What we'll do is like, as I told you, I have around 18 to 17 minutes. I will go and just show you, first of all, the household travel survey that we will use. And then we'll also try to import this in R just to try to read it and try then to manipulate a bit, try to get some summary, summary information or try to get some consistency checks, try to remove errors and all using R. You can do this manually as well because, but the, the 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 size of this data is relatively quite large so you always is nice to use some kind of programming platform than than just R, yeah uh, then just uh, manual excel sheets yeah so let's go and check the um, the household travel survey so yeah i have opened uh, the the file so this this file is also uploaded in moodle alongside uh, the lecture and uh, this basically is named as survey and task data so task is traffic analysis zones so basically zone information zonal data yeah and the survey data so this first one is basically the zonal attributes 
how we define zones uh, this is already been covered a bit in the previous uh, course that I told you like you where you have learned the force step body but we will try and get into a bit of detail about this in trip generation and all but the basic idea is that we try to aggregate instead of uh, instead of uh, to, to model a bigger like a network or whatever like you are like a, 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 a special side of a size of area we try to divide this into zones into into residential zones into commercial zones Zones and and with with the, the idea like we create this is already been uh, been discussed in one of the video lectures I remember because I was also giving comments zones are mostly created that okay there should be minimum internal trips that because within the zone you can, we don't create trips we say that zone to zone trips right so no within zones so we try to create zones in the sense that we have minimum internal trips between each zone and the, within a zone right and though the area of the zone is defined like it's only residential so there will be very less residential to residential trips that we will be interested about right uh, then okay you have a city center you have only commercial so there might be less trips or if the trips are only by walking maybe we can we can say that okay we can we don't need we can neglect that similarly the second idea is like homogeneity uh, so ho zones more residential more shopping more uh, more uh, like leisure so they, these things also are like lesser heterogeneity the zone has the better would it be because it will have less internal trips also and so what is like if uh, this can be controlled by the size spatial size I mean there has to be a compromise you cannot have very small zones because then you will have very big uh, uh, number of attributes like from zone to zone so it's, if you have 10 zones you have a matrix of 100 if you have 20 zones you have a matrix of 400 so it increased exponentially so we have to be give, we have to be very uh, like uh, it's a trade-off to to define the zone there have been a lot of re define the size of zones and there have been a lot of research how to how to do this zoning system and how to how to symmetrically create zones yeah so uh, this is a brief introduction we'll go in detail later maybe but yeah this is a basic uh, zone um, uh, information table so all the zone ids from 1 to 24 how many work trips it has how many what is the inhabitants what is the population so if you see this zone 20 has no population no kindergarten no school places no shopping area and just some workplace it can be a forest it can be something like simply um, uh, uh, hilly land or barren land or whatever but which has like a few workplaces and, and nothing else right so these are basically by the attributes you can try and see and understand okay what are the major major uh, diff different types of, of areas like simply here as well like if you see shopping area these two have a lot of shopping area and especially this one has a very large shopping area with very less um, so if you see this area so it has a lot of workplaces a lot of shopping area very less inhabitants we can say that it can be it can be a city center area or cbd whatever yeah so there's also something uh, uh, that we can uh, infer from this information but yeah this is the basic idea that we need the basic information that we need for uh, zonal data to go to trip generation to create productions and attractions attractions are based on the workplaces recreational shopping school kindergarten and productions are mostly based on inhabitants that is home trips mostly that most of the time the trip starts from home and ends at home so it's the number of trips that are produced are based on population that is present the inhabitants that are present in the zone so this is one of the types of zones and then next is the household what we we talked about the household survey data now the survey actually is this one that is the trip uh, from a uh, trip uh, information so uh, each trip ID and each, each trip question ID is basically the questionnaire ID as we were seeing it and then from zone start time purpose okay then what is the mode and yeah so these, these are the few information that at each trip uh, record should have basically start time end time start zone end zone and um yeah so now to refer this now this is just a table information now we also need so when we do demand modeling we also need what uh, the, the person attributes or the, along who did this trip so to understand this is this thing so okay now this trips let's suppose if you see these trips it's 135 that is the trip number 135 and before this is 300 uh, 3, 30,011 right so this 30,011 is a person so this we can see here this person is the person id 30011 and the household is 30010 
Yeah. So this is thirty thousand has three persons, and each person has different trips. Now to get to 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 get the information about like the people the the uh, like out of these trips, the people who are choosing car, we can go back and attach this with the information that okay, this person has this age group and is male or female, right? And then we can even go back and see the household that this household has number of cars, has car ownership or doesn't have car ownership, right? So there can be many number of persons that will not have car ownership here like zero and they will be mostly using the public transport. Yeah. So that, that this is something that we, we, we get from the trips, from individual trips till household, the complete information. Like each household, how many cars, do they have cars, they don't have cars, then what are the person attributes within that household and then each person how is he he's performing the trips so this is a basic uh, complete household travel survey information that can be used for the basic four step modeling uh, alongside the zone attributes which are very important to basically scale up the the trip information so this will be used to scale up uh, we will have the pro total production attraction and then we'll use this production attraction that to do uh, based on the factors that come from the travel survey or trip survey to 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 get the total complete OD matrix or the travel uh, zone to zone travel information that is in the form of OD matrix. Right. So we'll look into this in the four star modeling. We still have ten minutes. So this uh, you have seen the the basic survey. So I'll try to go into R and see uh, to load this how so to give you some basic hint that you can just follow up and try to load R and everything. Try to start running and try start loading excel file just trying to see some checks and also everything uh, which which can be done in r easily relatively than doing it manually um yeah so um, one important other thing that i want to show you is, is the errors let's suppose so if we see in the in, in zonal of course you will not see a lot of errors but these are like the trip information that can have a few number of errors for example there's like incomplete sometimes there is incomplete information for for this but it doesn't need to have okay home to a shopping home to his code okay so let's see let me check quickly what are other errors so yeah so for example in household survey you have number of children and you see that there's a lot of <laughs> 90 so i don't believe that it's how any household can have like 99 children uh mostly but okay uh the 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 idea here is like this is probably incomplete information that is recorded as 99 and he should instead we cannot just simply for example it's rather simple that we have a lot of information that has like 99 as the record so we cannot completely remove the record because it will reduce the survey quite largely so what we'll do we will we will consider this as maybe zero as the number of children that can be one idea of, of, of doing it or maybe trying to find a mean of the total number of children apart from these values and trying to contain or set the same mean that is there that is there right so we can be more and more advanced but a simple version of this would be just remove this and try to put zero instead of it right and similarly we'll see a lot of other errors probably let's continue and see um so yeah for example in car number of cars there are some incomplete information that is written as 99 so nobody will have 99 cars and it's very improbable that is 99 99 in many places so uh, this can also be just simply returned to zero and then also we can see a few we we can perform a few consistency checks on on the person and trip information table and it's it's rather um, unobvious that we will have a lot of i'm not sure if it, i'll try to see if i have the raw data or if it's data is completely processed i'll try to upload the data with some errors so that you can try and perform some uh, some uh, especially for the exam we will add some errors that we will expect you to do the consistency checks and try to either fill the errors or, or just remove the record for example there can be a missing destination for this thing right and now we have the origin zone we have the destination zone but we don't have the purpose at destination we can we don't have the mode of choice so one idea would be uh, i am not sure i won't i won't personally add a mode of choice because that is something that it's harder to harder to uh, impute but uh, yeah let's suppose you can say that oh, i have the origin zone and destination zone and based on the destination zone i can maybe add the purpose of destination maybe we can say homework or maybe you just simply need to remove it 
yeah so there can be a lot of inconsistencies in the data especially when we will giving you the projects or homeworks we, uh, we, we this is we can have different methods so one idea is like simply doing it manually which is not very good idea so next thing we can simply load these sheets into r and we can try and perform some consistency checks uh, checking the mean, minimum and maximum so for example i can give you some hints here so let's uh, just simply have this file as it is and let's go to r i have still five minutes i'm just going to quickly show you i already have a small script that is like nothing but uh, uh, like a few few lines that is simply loading the, the r information So this is the basic R file and uh, yeah we, we, we start with only a few um, packages uh, this read excel is basically to read the excel file dpl by R I am not very familiar so I will give you more introduction of R in my next lecture like I am not very big fan of R I am usually mostly, mostly using python but this lecture has been most like has been previously created with R last years as well so I didn't completely wanted to change it to python and uh, also like the more choice and other uh, other uh, other uh, tasks are using different R packages for mlogit and, uh, and different C choices so the, for that purpose I haven't really shifted everything to Python but yeah in general like R is also not bad overall so it's basically used mostly for statistics so data science engineers and statistical persons are mostly using R but nowadays like with machine learning deep learning Python has like come up more with the big data as well so yeah let's uh, get back to this. So this this package dplyr is basically used to manipulate data so manipulate uh, tables data frames and everything and then ggplot is for plotting excel is to read the excel file so let's start uh, let's uh, open up and start the loading the the packages and then now this is the script to load the excel file data that we have and it's rather simple so we create tables with different names so we have uh, zone attributes so zone attributes has 24 observations with seven variables household trip and so if you open each one of them you will see the same uh, table that we saw in the excel file yeah like for example household here has the same information so you have a lot of 99s here that we were seeing there as well and then person and trip information is also rather similar yeah so this is one idea now the next thing is okay now this is how you can basically load your data from the r uh, from from the excel file into r and next let's let's do some basic manipulations and uh, yeah so i have like one or two lines here so this is very simple mean i mean so this they like let's suppose you want to check a few things you want to you want to see uh, the consistency of household data a basic idea for that is like okay to check if there is any 99s in there right so 99 is a number that is not consistent with the size of like let's put number of children so what we'll do we'll say simply say household and then we'll say so a household and then what we have is number of children so number of children yeah so when we do this we will see that okay the value is 99 which is incorrect yeah so we need the, 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 similarly let's suppose number of cars is the second one here so we'll do number of cars instead and we also see 99 now, number of children let's let's not do anything but number of cars we need to to have like they can it's not possible to have number of number of cars at 99. So if we want to systematically change the value from 99 to zero, yeah, I already have this line as well. It's it's rather very simple and always like these things are are, 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 are like programming languages. These are best when you're trying to do something. These you will only learn them best when you're trying to actually do something. So basic task for you guys is try to remove if there is any inconsistencies like this 99 and other other values and try to add something else so that you understand how you basically try and use the Excel files and manipulate the data loading into R. Yeah. So for example, this is uh, this uh, number of cars. It has a few 99 whereas it's record so what we'll try to do is like we will try and remove the value of 99 
to zero. So what you do is like household number of cars inside household number of cars. If household number of cars is equal to 99, make it zero. Now if you run this thing, and then when you will check again what is the maximum household number of cars. So to run a line, we say control enter. And now you see the maximum number of cars is 5. So this is rather something that is uh, like scalable. You say that, okay, 5 number of cars, something like that. But like this thing is very simple. So try to start learning R a bit. So just try to install R Studio, very basic. So you for R, for R you need, uh, R, R. so I'll also upload probably a tutorial or something or an exercise for your help. That is like, okay, how you can install R, what are the different data types and all and just so that you can just some, have some basic understanding and the, the, just follow up that basic tutorial and from there you will have basically R programming compiler and this R studio which is an IDE to run different uh, packages or different codes of R. Yeah. So just try to do nothing. This is your basic task. Try to create like try to install R studio. Simply use this set of code. Try to read the Excel file. You have the Excel file as tables. And then try to just see a few things. So also, I will I will have a few commands in that in that uh, tutorial. You will have minimum, max. You have okay. You can get summary of tables and different other things. And okay, then try to manipulate a bit the information. That try to do some consistency checks. You can have a lot of different consistency. Checks. You can check um, all 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 the fields here. If this field has any empty uh, table, any empty cell, then you can check this as well. So you can. Put all the empty cells above and then you can simply say that okay remove all the records which have empty cells so things like this try to do them yourself very basic tasks try to take Google so whenever you're coding either basic or advanced in Python C++ R wherever MATLAB Google is the best you can just simply if you know what is the purpose if you know the vocabulary we want to do like if you know that what is the data type it's a table it's a let's suppose you have table in R right so you say that how to remove rows in table in R based on cell values so you will get the the basic syntax try to understand like different forums or stuff like that from from the google right understand how you can add different set of code or the syntax of the code to do different simple operations you will not be doing a lot of coding in this code i, I don't get afraid you don't like most of the code that we will do i will already give you the basic operations the only thing you will not need to create codes there will be a few set of codes i will give you a lot of tutorials written tutorials for that and also i what i will expect from you is like to understand the code and manipulate a bit to change what you want to do it's not that you need to write a new set of code you need to find a new function that do something the functions the scripts the scripts the syntax will be already there but maybe i'll give you a basic one and then i'll ask you okay do another operation similar with, with, with this course you will need to do something else so we will see this uh, we'll start with a bit of coding in r in the next lecture uh, but yeah, this is this is the basic tutorial, and yeah, let's. Um, I'm gonna upload most of the things in, in 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 Moodle. If you have any questions, please write under the video. I think I'm two minutes more than the the time, but it's fine. I think uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so let's uh, meet again in uh, lecture seven for trip generation. Till then, see you. Have a good day. Bye.